You love our news at Prime. Thanks for staying with us tonight. We continue then unpacking the developments within the Johannesburg Council. A new mayor has been elected, of course, being the ANC's candidate, Jeff Mukubo, Makubo, rather. In studio with me is the DA's Mike Moriarty, Sandy Leswana. He's political and governance analyst at the Witz School of Governance and our in-house political editor, Busi Songalwa. Ndadisana, let me come to you then. Uh, Mike seems to be saying that, yes, it's sad that we've lost, but certainly it's not a crisis for the Democratic Alliance. Is he being honest? Um, it's, a, it's, it's a devastating blow for the DA um, because uh, in the last elections in May, it was a narrow miss for the ANC to win or to lose this, this province. The coalition, as they came to be known with the EFF and so on, had made it actually gained a lot of ground against the African National Congress in Gauteng. Gauteng being the gem of, African politi of South African politics. So uh, the, the, the recent events of uh, the firing of Musi Maimane and the resignation of uh, 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 Herman Mashaba and so on has created divisions within the DA and probably within the support uh, base of the DA. And Gauteng is really the place where you test your political strength. And the political strength of the DA is weakened in Gauteng as we speak. I wonder what you make of what he's saying because enormously as a result of the loss of some of its key leaders and positions. But do you see that as part of the reason why you've ended up where you are today? Not on today's events. What happened was uh, the, um, the, the, the distribution of seats is as was the case in 2016. It's interesting that Sandile picks up the 2019 results. Um, if there was uh, a, a proportion of seats calculated on those results, actually the ANC would have been weaker. They would have had less chance to win today than, the, than the, what they got, largely because it was a 2016 distribution of seats. But your real question is, where are we out in the, in, the, in, the, in the broader world? I think it's an open question. There is no election immediately in the offering. Um, and so I think it's going to be tested with polls and by-elections and those kind of things. I think that from day to day, the DA, yes, does have a hell of a lot of hard work to do. But we're committed to do it. We really are committed to uh, reverse corruption. We are committed to get better governance where we can uh, get into government. And we think that we can persuade uh, voters that we are the better option, despite what has happened. Zbu, is it fair comment for uh, the DA to talk about the fact that, well, we haven't lost any margins since 2016, it's our coalition partners or our voting partners. They've simply abandoned us and now we're stuck in this position that we could have potentially been in in 2016, but the landscape was different then. I think that is exactly the nub of the problem here. I think uh, Mr. Moriarty is understating the extent of the trouble that the DA is in because they most obvious question is why would your partners desert you? Is it just because the ANC offered them um, some deal in the trade-off or does it talk to the bigger crisis within the DA? Now, already he has, uh, Mr. Moriarty, and also through the analysis, if you look at the numbers, you can tell that the DA, DA members voted against the party. And if you look at the EFF, the EFF was able to hold on to all 30 of their, of their, um, of their votes. Um, the same with the ANC. So that then talks to the very problem that I'm referring to, and this is not the first time, actually, that this has happened in the DA. Just recently, in Nelson Mandela Bay, how the DA lost in Nelson Mandela Bay was that two of their councillors voted against the party. So I think for me, how I see it, this actually is the beginning of the decline of the DA, and I think um, we'll get to a point where um, given the direction and the current leadership of the DA, um, it, will, it is either that the black voters, those who voted the DA, will desert the party, but also there's nothing to say that even the voters that left the DA and voted um, the, uh, the Freedom Front Plus will actually go back to the party. So it's a big gamble. Mike, I want us to talk about these two, some people are saying three, potentially DA members that yeah. um, seemingly supported the ANC or, as Bo is putting it, voted against the Democratic Alliance. Yes. How are you analyzing those numbers tonight? 
Well, obviously, um, we are extremely disappointed that two Surely you must be more than disappointed. These are your members. The, you, your expectation would be that going into an important council meeting like today, yeah. everybody in the party would understand the significance of having to toe the line. So the fact that in a secret vote ballot, they've decided to turn their back on the party, it should be more than disappointment. Well, I'd rather count the hundred that voted for us. Um, that's a, a huge number actually pales into insignificance. I think the real the question that needs to be asked is these individuals, how are they going to sleep tonight, really, honestly? They got there. They got their seats on the basis of people who vote DA, who vote for clean governance. They didn't vote for the ANC. They rejected corruption of the ANC. And yet those individuals, whoever they happen to be, uh, decided, well, they won't DA anymore. They're going to vote for the Mr. Makubo. Well, if that's the case, they shouldn't be with us anymore. They should actually own up and say, yeah, it was me, I resigned. Uh, I would hope that we'll see that in the next couple of days. Then we'll replace them and we'll carry on business as usual. I assure you, Spoo, um, the fact of the matter is that when we deal with people on the ground, we don't have the problems that you suggest that we have. And I think the real test of whether or not the uh, DA or does or doesn't have a problem is when we actually fight elections. So let's have that conversation once we've had that uh, scenario play out. So I want then to talk about the, the process going forward. Sandy Leswana has brought the issue of division within the DA and how this vote is uh, one of the ways in which that is highlighting itself. So from today on, do you then have a conversation with your councillors about, number one, who was it that voted with the Joburg mayor and expect that in good faith they'll raise their hands? If not, what other mechanisms are available to you to try and find out who are those amongst your ranks that you clearly cannot trust, especially when it comes to a vote? Well, you say we cannot trust them. We can only go on the basis of trust. Um, I mean, there's no purpose served in a witch hunt. Uh, these folks, they must um, live with their own consciences or not, as the case might be. Um, you know, the fact is that they're stealing from DA voters, uh, nobody else, not us. But um, we'll see what happens in the next couple of days. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that there's a hundred uh, very loyal and very uh, staunch, hard-working DA councillors. I would put it to you, Cathy, if somebody's going to behave like that, they're probably not going to be hard workers. And when we monitor their performance, when we actually do the usual stuff that we do with our public reps, they'll be found out and we'll deal with them as poor performance, not whether or not they did or didn't vote uh, a certain way on the 4th of uh, December in 2019. The tone that uh, Mike is taking on this particular issue is uh, quite easygoing. You know, one of uh, an understanding DA that says, hey, well, uh, like you're saying, we have 101 that we could count on, so there's no need to mention those others that went against us. Is that a fair reflection of how problematic it was that these councillors voted with the ANC on this particular matter? Uh, thanks, Cathy. I think, first of all, uh, you've got to give credit uh, to Mike uh, as a politician of the DA and uh, a public representative of the DA to make sure that uh, you make the best of a very bad situation. That, that you've got to give credit to him. Uh, now, let us look at the people that voted in favor of the African National Congress uh, from the DA. Uh, our politicians fought very hard in the national parliament to have a secret, a vote by secret ballot at the time so that a person can vote with a conscience. That was the, the argument. And some of us supported that argument publicly, that they must feel free to vote with their conscience without fear of retribution from their party, and so on and so forth. So the DA supported that view because they thought that Indeed, if that was permitted, a lot of ANC members would vote in favor of what the DA wanted, which was to, to remove Zuma. And Zuma got a narrow escape, and he was nearly removed because of that secret, where the ANC members, including Derek Anekom, voted uh, against uh, uh, the ANC position. So, so we have to take this uh, uh, with the seriousness that is there. And I would be very disappointed if the DA now runs up and down hunting people uh, whilst uh, uh, there are many, I'm sure the DA is one of those who want a uh, honeycomb protected and so on and so forth, the people who vote secretly against the will of their party. So I think we need to look at it also from that point of view. And my last point is that at this juncture, 
Why would anyone vote against the DA? One of the reasons why people would vote against the DA, even in favor of the African National Congress, is that the DA has emerged in some quarters, is now seen as a racist party, anti-black party, and anti-poor party. And the African National Congress, despite all its weaknesses and terrible atrocities it has committed, uh, it is still known as a liberation movement. Spoo, one of the biggest dynamics that today's voting leaves us with is the fact that the Joba Council is immensely polarized, especially where you have the three significant players. Uh, go going then and voting on any issue going forward and being able to get the majority support of the House is going to prove a mammoth task. What can we anticipate then, especially if the horse trading is going to be in a state of flux as much as we have seen it today? Look, I think the nature of the horse trading and what happened behind the scenes will become more clearer as the days progress. And it will become more clearer in how that mayoral committee is set up. We'll see what the ANC promised uh, the smaller parties. But I think um, ideologically and in terms of priorities, the ANC and the EFF um, are more aligned uh, as opposed to the NADA and the EFF for that matter. So I do not see, because obviously to pass budget, uh, things like budgets, you need the 50% plus one um, of the council. So the ANC with the current seats that it has and the 30 of the EFF is enough to get over that threshold. Even if the ANC does not get the support of the smaller parties um, that it uh, worked with to get to get to that, uh, to that particular position. So in terms of working relations, I, I heard Floyd Shivambu say that um, they will not vote with the ANC, but I know that the AFF, on, on, on any issues that where they feel that they are constituency, which is the same constituency, uh, by the way, where the ANC draws its support, that where they feel that their constituent is served, they will support that, which is why, um, actually, interestingly, um, Mr. Morati refers to uh, the progress and the pro-poor policies of the DA, which is in sourcing of uh, security guards, the extended hours of uh, clinics, which are um, Hemen Mashaba successes. I think that also goes into the heart of the problem um, that the DA has, the crisis that it has in terms of its messaging. Because Hemen Mashaba resigns because he says the current DA leadership undermines his authority and undermines the very coalition that gave us these uh, very successes that Mr. Uh, Morat is referring to. Sure. Mike, I see you're smiling there when Sbu is talking about potential voting between yeah. the ANC and the EFF. Given your experience of the EFF over the last uh, three years, as it were, are they somebody you can count on? Well, uh, you know, I've got to be honest and say that um, there were very good discussions with the DA and the EFF in the city of Johannesburg. Um, passing budgets was a matter of getting into the detail of what the uh, EFF constituency was asking. And happily for us, we were looking to um, uh, have a pro-poor program, and it fitted nicely with what we were intending to do anyway. So, you know, we were all pushing against open doors. So that wasn't our difficulty. Um, the, uh, the, the one thing that got me to smile uh, when Spoo started was the smaller parties, what deals were done for them. Yeah. And, and he, I think he's dead right. We'll see, you know, what positions all of a sudden some uh, arbitrary one-person party gets as a result of the deal that was done with the ANC. But anyway, that's uh, uh, you know, a matter for um, uh, the future. But in terms of the EFF, I think that the EFF and the ANC had a deal. And if that was the deal breaker then, there is no deal with the EFF now. I think Mr. Makubo is not going to be able to pass a budget. Not because he's, uh, you know, um, uh, something that uh, the ANC is not. The fact is that he stands for corruption. And the EFF is desperate to be break with uh, any form of corruption, notwithstanding VBS or what anything. Sure. But what, it's, what it says is it is anti-corruption. And on that basis they're not going to want to support a Makubo budget. He's, he's got a huge problem ahead of him. Mike, we're running out of time. Last brief question, yes or no answer. Does that mean the DA will not vote with the ANC on any budget matter in this council under Jeff Makubo? You know, I must tell you that I can't speak for my colleagues. 
Um, if the budget clearly is misaligned with the needs of the people, we won't vote for it. All right. Well, it certainly does sound like there's always room for negotiation in politics. Never a closed door, is there? That's what we leave it for tonight with a particular analysis coming, uh, looking at the state of affairs, state of play in Joburg as we welcome our new mayor, Jeff Makubo. After the break, Mark Lewis uh, takes over. They'll be talking about the Mandela Remembrance Walk and Run. Let's take a short break. We'll see you in a moment.